I live how I want to live. I party how I want to party. 17-year-old Nikki Steigl is out of control. Nicola is a absolute nightmare child. She's um, uncontrollable. She doesn't do what she's told. If I was to tell Nikki that she could not go out and could not go partying, could not go drinking, she'd go, yeah, whatever, and walk out the door. She's not. She's a schizo. She's a psycho. If she's switching and be an aggy bitch, you can't control it when she loses it. Oh, my God, look who it is. Look who it is. That's a girl into fighting cottage. I'm worried about Nikki when she goes out drinking. Her temper does flare up, and she does show a very ugly side. Yeah! Yeah, you were quite up here in college. You're in this night. Nobody can control her. When she's angry, that's it. You! I'm getting you! I'm getting you! Cut you out of Fighting ain't ladylike, but if someone pisses me off, I'm, I'm having them. It doesn't matter what they've done or haven't done, I'm going for them. She's gone. Right, that's it. She's gone. Nikki, look at me. Look at me in your eyes. Yeah, I went to anger management. Went to anger management and got kicked out of anger management for being angry. No, you're, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. How am I wrong? You threatened to burn the house down, you knocked me out my... Nikki dropped out of school after being excluded for fighting. Mum Carol has struggled to raise her and sister Claire, who has learning difficulties. You can't keep treating me the way you do. You treat me like dirt. Yeah, because you haven't got a backbone. No, I've got a heart condition. I had a heart attack. It was only a mild, if you can call it mild, um, heart attack, and I do believe that was brought on for all the stress. No, I never think about what I've done to my mum, what stress I've put on dad. I just don't think about it. I gave up caring a long time ago. I think with Nikki, she's got this big hard shell around her. Nobody can break through that hard shell. I think she's frightened of getting hurt. But I would just love Nikki to be that happy young girl that I had. For 18-year-old Essex girl Jerry McFay, the only thing that matters is looking good. You must be brown. I can't stand pale people who go out, oh, it gets on my nerves. Her appearance is very important to her, and yet she won't listen to any advice if she's getting it wrong. <laughs> the tango orange bit I'm talking about. <laughs> In life, I just want to happen to come across a footballer and um, have a Bentley and a Range Rover. I'd love that. Just go shopping, wake up, yeah, it's 60 grand to go spend. You just go spend it, wouldn't you? Go and Harrods and that, and just, oh, I'm getting excited now. Go on up, Jerry. Go on up, Jerry. I do think that Jerry is trying to live a celebrity lifestyle before earning the right to do so. Jerry left school with few qualifications. She's never had a job and funds her extravagant lifestyle by sponging money from her parents. Oh, behave. Look how many £20 notes you've got in your wallet. Dad, can I have an extra tenner? <laughs> Please, Dad. Yeah, yeah, all right. Thanks. She knows that I'm a big softie. She knows that uh, she'll get what she wants. Cos uh, I am a, <laughs> just a walking wallet as far as she's concerned, I suppose. Thanks. Unfortunately, Jerry lives in a little dream world where money grows on trees. And then when you say no, she can't understand why. I don't know. I keep thanking me and I think, oh, but I want it. So I. So I just go evil bitch mode. I think the times of seeing her head spin around on her shoulders and thinking she's the exorcist child. I am the bitch. I am terrible. Like, I am what I am. If you don't like it, then jog on. I think it's important that Jerry changes and changes now. And I think if, if she learns that you have to work hard, you know, you reap what you sow, I think it would make her a better person. In a last-ditch attempt to turn their lives around, both families are sending their disobedient daughters to live with new parents on the far side of the world. Love you. All right, tonight. I 
think this experience is going to be very important for Jerry because I think she's basically at the last chance saloon. She's, she really needs to sort herself out, you know, so this experience is, this is it. Thank you. Don't give them too much grief. Try and behave yourself and just don't embarrass anyone. Okay. See you later. I would like Nikki to try and sort out her anger, so I do need her to change dramatically, really. And hopefully, when she comes back, she'll be a better person. Hello. Hello, I'm Jerry. What's your name? Nikki. Oh. You all right? Yeah. I'm hey. so nervous. Oh, yeah. You know you're only allowed to take 20 kilograms? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to take some now. The girls are heading 5,000 miles away to Sri Lanka, an island off the coast of India. They will be staying with the De Silvers, a Buddhist family who've raised their children to be selfless and community-minded. I think we are strong parents because our children know what is expected of us. Discipline is not for the sake of disciplining or to control somebody. We have boundaries and lines and they need to know that. Dad Brindley is the chief executive of a multi-million pound finance company and Mum Mandy works in advertising. They are parents to four high achieving children. They are strict and I, I think all parents should be strict. You need those boundaries. If they are not there, you can get into bad company, you can go the wrong way. As long as you do what you're told and do what you're supposed to do, then they are okay with it. Despite living in a spacious house with three domestic servants, the family live a modest life according to simple Buddhist principles. Their children are not allowed mobile phones, computer games or pocket money. Of course it is important not to spoil your children because I think that from there stems all evil. Because in the end, society has to pay for it. <laughs> Some would see us as very strict, but I think we try our best to be good parents and only time will show what, whether what we've done is right and wrong, right or wrong. After a 12-hour flight, the British girls have arrived in Sri Lanka's main city of Colombo. Yeah, the place is just absolutely shit. It's like just I couldn't live here. Could not live here. I haven't seen one merc. I mean, it's in one Golf GTR. The fashion. What fashion? There is no fashion. Almost a quarter of the population live below the poverty line. And more than three million people survive on less than 70 pence a day. It's poor, it's poor here. Yeah. We in Sri Lankan ghetto. With all the ghetto people. I'm apprehensive because I don't know what I'm in for. We been tense these last few minutes waiting for them. We just hope they'll be here soon. How bad can it be? Oh, I'm nervous. Oh my God, I can see him. I can see him. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. no. Shit. Let it well straight. Hello. 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 Welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Brindley. Hello, I'm Jimmy. father for the next week. Okay. And Hello. this is Manoja. Welcome. Hello. Hello, I'm Mandy. Okay. I didn't get, you get your name again. It's Jerry. Jerry. Jerry, yeah. As in Tom and Jerry, you know, okay. Jerry. Okay. <laughs> so come in, shall we? Come. Walk in. Okay. For the next eight days, Nikki and Jerry will live by the same rules and values as the De Silva's own kids. Meet our family. This is Nikki and this is Jerry. Hello. And this is my family. Akwana San, he's 24 years old, he's doing a master's in economics. Tasha is number two, she's 22 years old. <laughs> and she's doing a finals in a LLB exam, external degree from the University of London. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Are you there? This is number three. She's doing her A levels next year. Next she's August. 18 years old. 18 years old, still in school. So you're busy bunching now? Yes. <laughs> well... She's 13 plus. Aww. She's Samakya. And the naughty one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're in our gang, then. 
Okay. Show them around. Shall I show you around the house? This is the kitchen, and this is where we normally have our meals as a family. This is actually a spare room. So the children have their school things, the desks. Our kids don't have TV, okay? There is no TV generally for the children. Extenders is off guard. <laughs> we are Buddhists. Buddhist. Buddhists. We follow Buddhism. Okay. So it's a way, of, it's what we call a way of life. So we don't have to pray? No, you don't have to pray. And this is the girls' room. One of you can sleep here, and one of you can sleep there. So that is our home, which is your home now. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. No, Piva. No <laughs> TV. I don't know whether they can live like this, huh? In this house, there's no, look, the, the fans, but I thought they were meant to have air conditioning. The kitchen hill, like, proper stinks. As soon as we walked in, I was like... Yeah, because that's that curry, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So if you don't like the smell of... The same smell of curry every day. It's disgusting. And they're so... Have you had, like, all their... What their... Their success? Yeah. I haven't got none of that. I've got a beautician thing, that's it. At least we don't have to pray. Yeah, I'm glad you don't have to pray. No, I'm not I thought a Buddha was one of them things that you rub their belly, you know? Them lucky things. I reckon the mother is the hardest one. She will knock them down. Listen, hard. she wears the trousers in this house. Yeah, so you can see it straight away. Yeah. The girls have arrived at the start of the monsoon season, and the rains have just hit Colombo. Nikki and Jerry, please come in. Before they are fully accepted into the family, Mandy and Brindley want the British girls to know exactly what's expected of them during their stay. I've already welcomed you in my heart. I have two more daughters, and that's exciting for me. I just want you all to give a chance to me to be a father for two more daughters and try and live within this home that we are living in. We are a Buddhist family, and we believe we all have a responsibility to make the world a better place. We insist on politeness and respect at all times to everyone. We will not tolerate smoking in our home. But like, if we do say to you, like, out of politeness, like, can we go out five minutes, please? And it's not on your property, then can we smoke? My daughter will not smoke. No, I know, I know, but we're, we're not and doing it in front of your daughter. children. Yeah, no, but I'm going so, to smoke. I've told you that I'm going to smoke. I know that, but let's, let's, let's give it a chance. We do not buy our children birthday presents because we do not believe in materialism. And no makeup is permitted. No, oh. I'm not happy with that. It might look unreasonable to you because this is a, something new. Strange to Something you. strange what we have here. Uh-huh. That's thunder. Oh, and you come into the monsoon. The Sri Lankan monsoon lasts around a month and brings heavy rain and thunderstorms across the island. But after listening to the rules, the weather is the last thing on Nikki's mind. No makeup, no bags, no TV. It's ridiculous. By the end of the week, I reckon I'll be like. By the end of the week, I'm gonna snap. It's not just Nikki who's unhappy about the rules. Jerry is also a smoker, and both girls are demanding the right to have a cigarette. I'm just going for a cigarette. No, don't, no. don't break the fast I have. No, please, five minutes. We really need. Yeah, we'll be five back in in five minutes, not even. What are you all doing? Do you want to wear small? Is he getting No, nothing to see. It's not something great. Let's start with the end of it. Please give me a chance. Huh? Should we just, just finish so, this? No, no. Now I love you to finish one. Come, please. Please be my daughter. Yeah. If our children feel that we have no strength, 
to, to stand up for what we think is right, we are in deep trouble, so we have to put our foot down. Before the day is over, we have to stop the cigarettes. So. Can I come in? First, you have to give your cigarettes to us. No. Well, actually, no way. If I pay for them... Please then mind your language, Nikki. No, Nikki. Yeah, but you wind me up. To me, you're my two daughters, you know? Yeah, but the thing is, if you was my mum, I'd tell you to off. No, we don't tolerate that you. kind of language Yeah, in but I'm house. telling you, that's what I'd tell Please. you. At least I'm you have to live in this home with these rules. The choice is yours. In actually, this house, it's not, it's no not child that. smokes. Full stop. You abide by the rules. Well, we're not going to worry, right? I'm not giving up my facts. If then you cannot be my daughter. That means Fine. this program is over. Fine. Yeah. Can I just go and talk to Nikki, please? You can speak to Nikki, but I just suggest that you don't smoke. Yes. Oh. My children have to know that we mean what we mean. And just because two kids have come and said they cannot give up, spoken in a language that my children would not speak, that we backed out. I just want to compromise, that's what I want. I said I'd rather just be able to just at least have a puff a day on a cigarette, you know? Yeah. Not even because we are throwing away a big opportunity, you know, if we just want to carry on doing this. Even if we smoke two cigarettes a day. Nick, I think we should go and talk to him. We've come up with, like, an idea. We've, like, decided that we'll only smoke two cigarettes a day. Now, okay. shall I tell you what I think? You hand over your cigarettes to us, and we'll give you the two cigarettes for the day. OK, Jerry? Nikki? OK. I'm happy. Thank you. Jerry, you know what I would have done with my daughters if we had a confrontation? What? Giving them a hug and... Oh, do you want to give me a hug? Yes. <laughs> Bless you. Mm. <laughs> While the girls are pleased with the compromise, Mandy is dismayed by their behavior. attitude. Yeah. I'm just shocked at the way they behave. I'm appalled, actually. But the fact that they cannot respect somebody else's opinion and their sense of values is what is absolutely shocking. Overnight, the monsoon has caused chaos and flooding throughout Sri Lanka. 200,000 people have been made homeless, and parts of the capital are still underwater. I thought I was going to get a bit of a tan at least. But, you know, hopefully it might brighten up. And then we can uh, arrange a cheeky beach appointment. This kind of rain can last from a week to two weeks. But your house get flooded? Of course our house gets flooded. Because it's nearly flooding now. For Buddhists, doing things for people in need is a way of life. And with the monsoon causing devastation, Mandy wants the girls to help her prepare food parcels for the city's homeless. Are we making this to give to the people? people yes. Oh, OK. People who have less than us, who would now most probably be not knowing where to stay because of the rain. Because giving is part of our Buddhism. Buddhism has three basic things that we practice. Giving. Taking? Not taking. Taking is something we don't do. I hope they experience the joy and the happiness people get by receiving. Maybe it will move them to do something. But the only thing Nikki's been moved to do is to down tools and go back to bed. Nikki, 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 would you like to come and cook something? Jerry has already cooked the vegetables. Mm, she's giving me a headache. I'm giving you a headache? Yeah. Yeah, please get up now and come. Then you won't get a headache. Come on. No. You're going to stay here? Yeah, I'm going to stay here. It's not too well. I'm not coming at any food. I'm sure you're the loser for it. No, you're the loser. Shut up. Go away. Give me a headache. 
I don't know whether she's really sick, but I really don't think so. I think she wants a bit of attention. Nikki just is looking for some attention. I, I don't have the time to be giving it to her because we need to move on. At home, Jerry does nothing for other people and she doesn't believe in giving to the poor. When I say um, people begging on the street, I just assure them that they're just druggies, isn't it? So I just ignore them. Like, even the ones sitting at Romford Station and that, you, they're sitting there drinking a beer, asking for money. I think, no, go away, you're a tramp. Mandy's brought Jerry to a spot downtown where the homeless gather to beg for food. Give it, oh, Hannah. They give him. Just take a packet and give him. No, no, take it, take it. Yeah, then you want to take a lemon? Huh? Okay. 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 I don't know, I didn't like it at all. Maybe he hasn't eaten for four days, we don't know. But when we give, we have to give unconditionally. So why don't they go and get jobs? Because there may be no jobs for them. That's why there's unemployment. No, everyone's got, everyone can get a job, can't they? Everyone can. But no. well, it is not for us to judge why they don't get a... I know, they, you might not judge, but I just think if they cannot be bothered to go out and get a job and do better for themselves, and I think full bollocks, they, they, it's nothing, I just think, nah. I just think Pont's another paper is trampy. I really do. But if I can help him a little by giving something, that is what I'll do. The De Zilva family believe in rising early. Every day, Brindley wakes his kids with a mug of hot milk. But Nikki's not a morning person. No, to take it away. Now, please stop your mind games. You're trying to talk me around everything. It doesn't work. No, the language is a problem. Yeah, but seriously, you're annoying me. Seriously, you're like, giving me a serious headache. So you're not, you're not screaming at me? Do you understand? Don't scream at you. Yes, not you do not. In my ear at like five o'clock in the morning. I don't care about what you say. I want you to tell me. And I don't care what you say. Like you, better, you. you better care because you're, you're in this house. Dad. That's how it goes here. Yeah, whatever. And I'm telling you, go away now. I'm not until you tell me you heard me. Oh, my God. We'd go away if I tell you I won't use bad language. Yes. I won't use bad language. Now, can you go away? I told you this attitude has to stop. No, you told me to swear that stop. Not that attitude. Oh my god. Are you lying on smack or something? Can't like, figure out Did, what you say most of the time. I think you have a memory lapse. No, Didn't I you go don't through have those memory rules? lapse. You have memory lapse. Nikki. Will you move? No, sorry. <sighs> Nikki. Nikki. No, will you move? Don't be grabbing me. No, I want you to look at me. Nikki, I, I won't touch you. This has to stop, and I mean it. If she cannot change her attitude, she doesn't come back into this house. Do you understand? Okay. But for someone as aggressive as Nikki, changing her attitude may not be easy. I would actually like to be in control of my anger, but sometimes I just, I just keep playing up. I like to be more friendly, you know, like actually give people a chance, but I find that very hard. I like to give people a chance, like new people, I don't give a chance. I wouldn't like to be angry all the time. Like, cos at home I'm quite angry, or like, most of the time I'm angry. I'm not really that happy. After Jerry's extreme reaction to the jobless street beggars, 
Mandy wants the girls to see what life's like for working Sri Lankans. She's arranged for them to do a day's work at a rural cinnamon plantation. Nikki and Jerry, you're going outdoors, and even your shoes, I recommend that you wear, you know, kind of closed shoes, not flip-flops. Are we getting paid for it? Uh, no, you don't. You won't be getting paid for it because it's just to sample what work is like. Back home in Britain, neither of the girls has ever managed to hold down a full-time job. A little paper when I was younger, because everyone does, didn't they? <laughs> I've never worked and had one of them things. Is it a P45? Never had one of them. Human beings are made to do something. We are not made to just sit on a branch and chirp like a bird. You know, we're given a brain and we are meant to use it. So I hope they see a different kind of life and a different sense of values, maybe. The monsoon has created even worse devastation in the countryside. I can't be working in that. If it's like this deep, I'm not getting out of the car, no way. No, I'm not. I don't want my feet getting rabies. Sri Lanka produces 90% of the world's cinnamon, and the industry provides a vital income for thousands of the island's poor. The girls will be working for Aravinda Primo, who runs a large plantation deep in the rainforest. I'm Prima. Hello. Yeah, I'm Prima. You are, can you introduce you? Nikki. I'm Jerry, and this is Nikki. Yeah. So I will take you to the field and uh, show you how to cut to the, the field. Cinnamon. Yeah. Field? Yeah. We're that in a field? That is a cinnamon field. So, so you... I haven't got shoes on properly. No problem. It's, it's all right. Can you hear the rain? Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> oh my, just, oh, I'm f***ing all in my shoe. No, I'm standing. Oh. No, I Careful, can't, I can't do this. Bollocks, no Careful. way, look, I'm not getting on my feet in that wet. No way, I'm going back. No way. Jerry. Oh, well, you have to. There's no way on this earth I am going down there. You're not even wearing shoes. I'm no. not wearing shoes. Yeah, you're not wearing shoes. I'm wearing shoes, and I still so, don't want to do it. So you can remove the shoes and come. I don't want to remove no, my you can, shoes. You can, you can remove the it. shoes and come. No, no problem. There's, there's no. Uh, no, I don't want to do it. No, my shoes are all going to get wet. I don't no. want to do it. No, I'm going back to the van. So you will have to go come. Jerry, no. you will have to come. I don't want to. I think I'll join you on that one, Jerry. Like, I want to do it or something. I'll give you, give you I'm not being funny, yeah. but if she don't want to wear them shoes that no, cover I don't, her I don't feet. want to wear these shoes. I don't want to. I don't want to wear them. I don't want to wear no, no, nothing. Like, I just don't want to walk in the mud. I don't want to be here. Look how much I'm sweating. It's getting on my nerves. <laughs> they are pampered, actually. They don't know how important this work for the people uh, who lives here, the poor people. The mud is uh, important than the uh, uh, living. No? Half an hour later, the girls finally agree to do some work, but only as long as it's inside. These people go to the field and cut the cinema and leave it here and first mm -hmm. scrape the outer bath, then with a small knife, take the outer bath. How old is she? 67. How many hours do they work? They start at about uh, six, 6 in the morning. Sometimes go till 11, 12 in the night. But they are paid. I know the pay, but they're why paid. do they do so many hours? Yeah, they, that's, it's the job. She can make me pants if that's horrible to see an old woman sit there and I'm working. Uh, sometimes children won't uh, look after them. There are a lot of people in the world like this. 
So you've got to take off the green stuff, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good then. That's a turnip. Cinnamon is a spice used to add flavour to food, and it's produced by stripping and then drying the bark okay. from cinnamon trees. I'm never going to look at a smelly cinnamon stick ever again in the same <laughs> way. Okay, I'll give it another go. Ain't easy. Looks easy, but it's not. It takes a lot of effort. Cinnamon workers only earn about £15 a week. Would you like to not to work? Would you like not to work? She likes, but then she doesn't, she, she can't live. Tell her she should get her children to go and get a job. <laughs> she says that she uh, feels lazy to be at home. If my mum was your age and she was working in one of these places, I'd come work in one of these for my mum. Yeah. I would. I feel sorry for the old woman. She looks knackered, like, six o'clock in the morning till, like, 11, 12 at night. That is ridiculous. And now I wanted to cry. She, like, probably broke my heart on that. I think in myself today, I found out I can actually care for someone that I don't know. And that's, like, a lot for me, because I don't give no-one a chance. For some reason, this trip is, like, sort of made my soft side come out, and I'm, I'm not used to it. It's, like, kind of freaking out at the moment. Bye. Bye. After their argument earlier in the day, Brindley wants to talk to Nikki about her aggressive behaviour. I'm not scared for myself. I'm scared for people. People. So if you get it. if you get angry, what do you will, how you will? They probably smack you in the face or headbutt you or something like that. Do you know what I mean you wouldn't be the fattest? I'll just go for you. That's what comes naturally. That's what comes naturally. I'd probably stab you in the eye from a high heel or something. Yeah. I can't control so it. So you sometimes take a deep breath? No, I've tried that. <laughs> when I had management and some women had puppets, and I smacked over one of the puppets because, yeah. really, that's not going to work for me. Puppets. The anger is not something that just comes naturally. It's something she has built as a, as a wall to hide behind. When you're insecure, you tend to use anger as a barrier to protect yourself from what you would what you were scared of or what you fear. The British teens are halfway through their week with the De Silva family. Mandy thinks Jerry's attitude to helping others still needs to change. She's found us some voluntary work at a local care home. I've arranged Jerry for you to go to a place where you will be able to make use of what you do best, your makeup skills and your beauty therapy. Make everyone beautiful, and I'm sure you'll feel beautiful. I will. And you come and tell me all about it. I will. But I hope the experience will teach her that beauty is but skin deep. And the true beauty is what these people have, which shines out all the time regardless. But of course everything depends on one's willingness to learn. The Cheshire home in the Gumbo offers care to 48 residents with physical and mental disabilities. 84-year-old Gladys Werezinge runs the home with a team of volunteers. When we really come here and do things, you really have the satisfaction. And now to know that you are coming here to do all this, was also a great thing, you know, looking forward to it. Gladys has arranged for Jerry to do makeup sessions for some of the residents. Hello. Hello, Jerry. I'm Jerry. Yeah, I'm Gladys. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. And very really nice of you to come and volunteer to do some work here with all our residents. Mm -hmm. Who I think we'll be really happy to see you. Mm -hmm. You can always put a smile on their faces. Is this the first time I've been in a home like this? Yeah. Hello. I'm Jerry. 
Hello. This is Lakshman. This is Chitra. This is Jerry. Uh, What's she doing? Melon, melon. Melon, melon. Balloon. She wants balloons. Where the hell are balloons? No, but she always asks people for balloons. <laughs> Stop now. I'll stop. This uh, oh. Hold on, I'll be two seconds. I'm going outside, I need some air. I can't do that. I can't. I can't do it. No way. What what what's what's the matter? I can't do that. I can't sit there with people who are not on my wavelength. I can't. I can't even talk to them. That just freaks me right out. What, what is it that freaks you out? She just grabbed my hand and pulled me towards her. I don't like things like that. I hate things like that. I've never been to a disability home in my life, but I don't like it at all. At all. I swear to God. I can't do it. I'm not emotionally ready for this. No. I really ain't. No, I can't. Seriously. I've never, ever had an experience like this, and to be honest, it's making me frightened. No. I don't like it. I don't get frightened, because, I mean, these are uh, dead, unfortunate people, but we must uh, try to help them, and you can count your blessings, say that you are OK like this. But she mustn't be afraid of any, you know, just odd looking. I know they are not looking normal, they look odd, but I mean, most of them are mentally a little disturbed, so they look odd. So she must have been a little upset seeing so many at once. Despite talking to Gladys, Jerry is still refusing to do any makeovers for the residents. When I walked in there and saw the people, I thought, this and walked back out. That's it. That's what went through my head. I can't believe I just sat next to someone in a in that ass, I really don't want to be it. So can we go? I hate it. Hate it with passion. Hate's a strong word, but I f***ing hate it. I just want to go. I want to go. Come on, can we go? Brindley is so concerned by Nikki's anger problems, he's taking her to visit the family's Buddhist priest, the Reverend Olande Ananda. I get the impression that she feels that the anger is the best defense or weapon she has. And uh, she's taken an element of pride in having it. Because she's got away with a lot of things or achieved or got what she wants with this anger. So the way we could help her is to help her to manage it. Reverend Olande Anande, we could relate to her and maybe reach to her because he is used to relating to troubled children, especially from the West. He could understand the Western mindset. With a little bit of guidance, I think she can be a great lady. If you would like, you can help me carry this stuff. But after being dropped off by Brindley, Nikki's already getting wound up about the no-shoes rule inside the temple. Take off my shoes to go in there. No way. I don't like feet. He knows full well I don't like feet. So he's bringing me somewhere where I'm going to see loads of feet around. So, Nikki, how do you like the place? Like, your first... Your I like first... it, but I can't go inside. Because what? Because I don't like feet and I'm not taking off my shoes. So let us make what is called a one-time exception. No. <laughs> For you. Uh, what, can I keep your shoes? Yeah, if you keep your shoes on. Oh, yes. thank you. Yes. You're lovely, you are. Thank you. I hope your shoes are clean. You can wipe them when you come into the hall. Nikki's anger problems got worse five years ago after her dad's identity was revealed to her by her sister on the day of their grandfather's funeral. She didn't even know her dad until she was 13, through my father's funeral. That was the first day she met her real dad. Awkward, um, horrible place to me because I just lost a loved one. Yeah, I got told he was my dad, but that's only because my sister told me. My mum wasn't going to tell me. I must have arguments my mum about it. Throughout her childhood, Nikki's mum kept her dad's identity secret. 
She thought she was acting in Nicky's best interests, but the deception has driven a wedge between them. I think that's why she blames me. She blames me all the time, so I think that's where that's coming from. I know you can't turn back the years and try and undo what went wrong, but I would love Nikki to go back to the way she used to be. The loving, happy child she was. And I want her to love me again, like she did before. In all directions. My anger is really bad. Like, when it comes up, that's it. I can't control it. Oh, right. You and get then, angry? Yes, very angry. Really? I'd say about 80% 80, 80 of the day I'm angry. 80% of the time you're angry. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard to control that. Yeah. It scares me sometimes. All right. So do you have any idea where the anger comes from? I got let down by someone in the past and they ruined my trust completely. All right. That was a very, very bad experience. Yeah. But I still got a lot of hate in me because of it. It would be a pity in a way if this is going to spoil uh, a lot of your life, actually, you know? I still think about it a lot, so... Mm. Meditation is at the core of the Buddhist way of life. And after helping to serve lunch to the monks, Nikki's agreed to see if it might help control her anger. So what we do is just feel at home, at sitting here now. Then we close the eyes gently, relax. Let us then develop the good quality of universal loving-kindness by wishing from your heart, may I be free from anger and fear, peaceful and happy. Bhavatu sambhamangalam Sada Sati Bhavan Tuti. And while relaxing body and mind, you can slowly, slowly open your eyes. I've never thought of using meditation before. <laughs> to be honest, I've always thought it's a waste of time just sitting on a pillow closing your eyes, but I'll see it's not. I've learned a lot about myself today. I learned that I can control my anger. I'd be a much happier person if I wasn't so angry all the time. I'm actually quite jolly today. I keep smiling, it's not like me. She's quite happy, I think. Back at the house, a letter's arrived from Nikki's mum. Is a letter for you? Thank you. Dear Nikki, I know you are unhappy being so angry all the time. I know it's a way of pushing people away and keeping a distance so that you are never hurt or let down. But you are never going to be happy until you find the strength to drop your guards and allow people to kick close again. Your anger is tearing me apart. It makes me so sad. I'm sorry if I haven't always been there for you. I'm sorry for the mistakes I have made. Love you forever and see you Sunday. I can't wait. Love, Mum. Loads of kisses. Mm. Oh, no, she loves me. You know her too, bitch. She's hard. No. She's right though. I do hide and I do push everyone away because I've been hurt in the past. I don't want to be angry, I want to be happy. I just want to cuddle her and say sorry. And I'll change. Or I'll try to change. The British teens are nearing the end of their stay in Sri Lanka. Mandy wants to know why Jerry ran out of the care home. 
I think I find it so difficult because I'm not used to seeing disability people. I think the bigger thing is that you come out of it and realize, look, it is the who you are that matters, not what you own, not what you have, not what you look, but what you are. I don't know, I don't know what came over me. I just thought I had to get out of this place. I would like you to think that you're fortunate, that you should have realized there are people who are far less fortunate, who have nothing, who have nobody. They're just there waiting for somebody's charity. Yes, I think that's what I'd like you to take home with you. After talking to Mandy, Jerry's decided to go through with the makeovers, and Nikki and the family's 13-year-old daughter, Samakia, have agreed to go with her. I want Jerry to come back again, for her to give another chance to see what they're like. You're not supposed to judge people, like, the way they look, but it's what matters is inside. Jerry is very nervous, but I think she's not used to it, and that's why she gets a bit scared. That's the one I got really scared of. Why? She grabbed my hand, so I'm putting it in water. Do you want your nails done? Put your hands Yeah. Just show one. Uh. Shall I do our other hand? Yeah. Jerry's gonna do your other hand. All right. I'm right, right shaking. <laughs> There you go. Like him? Yeah. Good. Yeah, I really enjoy doing beauty in there. I think it's brilliant. I feel more relaxed than I did when I first oh when I first come here. Well, you want this hand this colour? That one this colour? Tell her she looks pretty. I had her last night. See all their faces, man. Smiling. I know they were so grateful. I don't suppose they get many people just coming in and doing things like that. I, I can't get over just how lucky I am. My sister, she's uh, 14, but she's got a brain of age of like. For a five-year-old, like, she's probably like well behind. Wow. And at times, so if she's got like, hyperactive, she's special needs. She has special needs school. Mm. At home, I'm so selfish and I'm just so lazy and I just don't think of others. But being here today is just like there are people out there that are so like worse off, and I just think, why am I like that? And today, when I gave something back, it just felt good. It takes a lot of courage to come back and do something that you were so scared of last time. Oh. This little girl wants a balloon so much. I just want to give her one now. And have you got a balloon, Marty? Have you got a balloon? No. I've got two for you. <laughs> I think what I've learned is Everyone's the same, no matter how they look. We all have feelings, and we're all human. So I suppose I was a bit nasty to treat like to just walk out the way I did. But I think they've forgiven me. Today. Thank you, Mary. Back home, 
The girls are enjoying their last night with the family. Really? <laughs> 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 How's it? Oh, oh, Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Mm. And it also can remind you of us. Yes. I'd yes. say we had two troubled teenagers and tried putting them straight. <laughs> <laughs> Very sweet of you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> British girls' time in Sri Lanka has come to an end. I hope you take some good, good memories better. and always know there's someone who's far worse off than you. Oh, you look so lovely. I think Mandy and Brinley are good because they just show you another life. So it makes you appreciate what you've got at home. And I can go home now and I'll be a little bit calmer and a little bit more relaxed and not so stressed all the time. I think Mandy and Brinley are absolutely lovely. The way they give so much is, like, absolutely amazing. They've taught me it is what's inside that counts at the end of the day. I'd like to think that she might have learnt from this experience a little bit of appreciation, maybe a little bit more respect. I love you. Hi. Oh. It's just really hit me, I think. More than it, I was expecting anything to. Being with people that are just so less fortunate has sort of made me think, wow. Like, cos I didn't realise actually how selfish I was. Cos I felt so selfish when I just run out of that out, when I run out of the home. But it's just, when I was out in Sri Lanka, I just thought, I just want my mum. But I think I value my family so much now. Well, I'm glad you've realised that anyway. Because I am here for you. <laughs> Come on, you know you want to. <laughs> if she's not going to be selfish anymore, that would be fantastic. To hear those words, really, if that's how she feels, then let's keep her fingers crossed. I oh, really am looking forward to seeing her, but I'm so nervous. It's like meeting her for the first time after about 10 years. And I've really missed her, and I'm not quite sure what to expect. Here you go. Hello, sweet home. Oh, I missed you. I missed you too. Oh, Mum, don't cry. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to cry. Mm, meditation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they say meditation helps you if you're angry. Yeah. Perhaps you should do that more often. And I've been a complete bitch over the years, and I'm sorry. I just want to say sorry to you, Nikki. I should have been there for you. I am your mother at the end of the day. Just happy right now to be home. This is a new start for me and Nikki. From when she walked through the door, you could just see the relaxed Nikki, the Nikki that I used to know. And you sort of, you could see that in her face, which was lovely. I think with Nikki, with the attitude she's got at the moment, I think it's all positive.